So there's dogs and a hooker in my house? What you gonna do when the hookers come for you? That means you paid them enough. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when the hookers come for you? I'm John Rantham with the Retro View of Bad Boys from 1995, directed by Michael Bay. Before Michael Bay got such a swelled, bulbous, throbbing head, that he thought he could do anything. He could blow any amount of shit up to hide the fact that none of his movies really have ever had Anything good as far as writing goes? Well, actually, that's unfair. The Rock was pretty good. But I'm going to chalk that up to the fact that the cast was really good in that because I don't think Michael Bay has actually ever really been a good filmmaker. That being said, when he is kind of reeled in a little bit and actually told by a studio, hey, try to make something that can appeal to people but actually doesn't insult their intelligence entirely, we get something like Bad Boys. That being said... Bad Boys, Bad Boys 2, Electric Boogaloo, Bad Boys for Life, and Bad Boys Ride or Die. It's coming out in just a couple weeks. I decided I'm going to revisit this. And you know, Bad Boys isn't quite as good as I remember. I know that's probably going to get a lot of people to turn this off. That's okay. I will explain. <clears throat> but as far as retro reviews go, you're going to get a lot of spoilers. I don't really think that's surprising. The movie is almost 30 years old. What do you want from me? If you weren't 14 years old like I was when this came out then you're probably going to be very surprised by this. For those who have seen Bad Boys, what did you think of it initially? What did you think of it when you uh, rewatched it recently? So yeah, four people wrote this. It took four people. And that's actually, I think, the biggest issue. I have no issue with people getting a chance to do, you know, like something they love and earn a paycheck and everything. <clears throat> and maybe, you know, add this to their resume or resume, as it were, except Twilight was not involved at this point. But you had George Gallo, who did the... Um, who did the story, according to IMDb. He did Midnight Run, Going Anywhere. You had Michael Berry, <coughs> Jim Mulholland of the later Mulholland Drive fame, except not. They uh, they did stuff like, you know, something called, a project called Oscar, and also the Late Late Show with David Letterman, or the Late Show with David Letterman, whatever the fuck one that was. No, I know. Letterman, Leno. Who was your favorite? Or, you know, my personal favorite, Carson, even though I didn't grow up on Carson. Doug Richardson also, who did Money Train, which is another one that came out, I believe, in 1995 that I need to check out at some point. So, brief rundown. Will Smith is Mike Lowry, a playboy who comes from a rich family who has left a lot of money but always wanted to be a cop. <coughs> and Marcus Bennett, played by Martin Lawrence. <coughs> Martin Lawrence was funny at times. Martin Lawrence is not a good leading man. Unless you have somebody working with him, he is not a good leading man. I'm sorry. Big Mama's house was... Fine, but kind of like the Nutty Professor hasn't aged all that well necessarily. But they are two cops <laughs> that must stop a um, must stop a heroin uh, shipment from occurring, and that <laughs> and the guy's name is Fouché, and <laughs> T H or T C H E K Y K A R Y O Takeshi Car Cario. He kind of reminds me of like a French David Warner. <clears throat> he was in The Patriot and in The Core. By the way, David Warner also was in Scream 2, believe it or not. Nevertheless, like he's actually a pretty good actor. David Warner, but also this French guy. This guy actually was born in Turkey and Istanbul. Except you actually have to put it in the oven for a little bit. And then it is Istanbul. It's going to get everybody in Istanbul all upset. All three of you that happen to be watching this. And he's some French guy, and just he has a heroin deal. But a snafu happens, a little bit of bump in the road in the form of Tia Leone. Speaking of bumps, she's like a bump on a log. Yeah, she plays Julie, and she has all the enthusiasm that she usually has. I'm going to just spoil a little something right here and say I've never been a fan of Tia Leone. Sure, she at times looked good, kind of, maybe, if you're into that sort of thing. Many men already were, even by this point. <clears throat> but... She's not necessarily a good actress, or that funny, or that interesting. Yeah. And a lot of you, you had Teresa Handel, or Teresa Randall, rather, who couldn't handle being called anything other than Teresa. So apparently they thought she was a blithering idiot. And she's been in some good stuff. She doesn't strike me as a blithering idiot. So you had Marge <coughs> Hellenberger, who I believe was the one that was in CSI that still looked incredible. You had Nestor Serrano, you had Joe uh, Pantoliano, Pantoliano. You had a lot of people with a lot of syllables in their names, and I'm a confused 43-year-old white man with brain injury, so I'm just going to make fun of this. 
So, $19 million budget, $39 million in today's money, $15.5 million opening, <clears throat> just under $32 million in today's money. We're going about two times here. And we get $65.8 million U.S. gross, $135.3 million in today's money, and $141.4 million worldwide. $290.9 million in today's money, so there you go. Successful. So they decided to really go all out with Bad Boys 2. I will get to that later. So, yeah, um, Will Smith is very rich and doesn't want food eaten in his car, but then a fry gets caught, and then they have to beat up a couple guys. One that's a really, really big guy, and one that is very, very high on coke, or heroin, or meth. It's Florida. It's really hard to tell. Could have been the bath salts, like that face-eating guy from years after this. So, this really was a breakout role for Will Smith. I mean, yes, he had been in... I forget what the movie was in 1993 that he was in that was actually, you know, something that helped elevate him as an actor. And this uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was still going on. I think that went till 96. And Martin Lawrence, who had been in Martin, what up? And he would grow and do some projects. Will Smith, no doubt, is the bigger star than Martin Lawrence. They played off each other well at times. Some of the comedy worked. Other times it landed with a resounding thud. There were times where I was like, these jokes are fucking awful. <laughs> but, yeah, basically, um, Mr. Cairo Syrup, I'll just call him that. It's just a lot easier to say it. He um, ends up stealing all the heroin from this uh, police from this police locker. And it turns out there's actually somebody on the inside that did it. Um, so basically, Joe, Captain Howard, I believe says, here's what you're going to do. You're, you got 72 hours behind it. Just do what you do, only faster. That's what she said. I did like the music, actually. I thought the music was pretty goddamn good. <clears throat> there was a song like Shy Guy, I believe, and not the Super Mario Brothers villain. But there were some good songs in this. There was also some really draining and droning piano and dirty sax music that I didn't necessarily think fit. And also, they had an endless amount of slow-mo. Zack Snyder must have looked at this and said, you could add more, and he has in his projects. Boy, has he ever. <clears throat> uh, the one that played uh, Maxie or Max, uh, whatever happened to her? Because she was attractive. She was only in this for a little bit, but whatever. The one that played Fran seems also attractive. Apparently, I think she was in The Crow if I saw her IMDb page, and I forgot about that. Um... <clears throat> So then they do the you know the line that was from the trailer, don't be alarmed, word, and I'm not going to say the word, but it's the same word that was at the end of that uh, the American Society of Magical. There you go. There's a dead guy. <clears throat> Marcus doesn't like being around dead bodies. They figure out and put this whole thing together. <clears throat> and there was a guy named Eddie that uh, had plenty of money, decided to take him home tonight. Aha, aha, I'm sorry. And basically, Fauché, or <clears throat> the French fuck, as I could call him, Cairo Syrup, decides to just shoot them. Well, shoot him, and then <clears throat> shoots uh, basically Max, who is a friend, who really, really likes Mike Lowry. To be honest, Will Smith is a good-looking man. How could you not? She's a good-looking woman. He certainly would have been better off with her than he was with Jada fucking Pinkett Smith, that piece of goddamn dog shit. Anyway... <clears throat> Damn shame the Scream 2, the opening of that, actually wasn't... Re well, no, I'm not going to finish that. So anyway, uh, so Julie and Max arrive under the guise of being call girls, and Tia Leone excuses herself to try and go get a personality transplant in the bathroom, or try to figure out, shit, what are my lines? I really should say something better and be interesting, except she's Tia Leone. I'll stop dumping on Tia Leone one of these days, except I can't. I just can't, because she's not good. So, it was daytime and then sudden nightfall because she is getting away from this. Ha <laughs> ha, they're coming to take me away, ha <laughs> ha. And she dives into a pool, well, jumps into a pool, that probably should have hurt her, jumping from that height, just want to say. Um, <clears throat> and then, basically, she will only talk to Mike Lowry because she knows that's who Max knew. <clears throat> Captain says... Hey, um, you know, Marcus, you're going to pretend to be him. Marcus is married, by the way. Teresa is his wife, played by Teresa Randall. Again, they didn't trust her to know another name. 
So he brings um, he brings uh, Julie to Mike's apartment, loft thing, <clears throat> whatever. And after getting the dogs and all that, and yeah, Mike isn't very happy. He says so. Oh, there's dogs and a hooker in my house. To <laughs> to be fair, back in the '90s, you could call a woman a hooker, and it was seen as a term of endearment. I guess kinda. The '90s were weird, very weird. I lived through the whole decade. I know. Um, <clears throat> so the captain's trying to shoot some hoops. And Will Smith grabs one and just sinks it immediately. Everybody wants to be like Mike. Well, you're going to be retired like him if you don't get this. <laughs> this is during a brief time when, you know, Michael Jordan retired from baseball or basketball to play baseball. Weird time. <clears throat> there are terrible lines during this. There are just some jokes that land with a thud. There are some endearing moments and some pretty fun moments. I still think you could have cut a good 15 minutes off of this and you wouldn't have missed shit and it wouldn't have been overindulging. But don't worry, overindulging comes a little bit later with Bad Boys 2 where every car in the known state got wrecked. But um, the spinny camera work is a bit nuts. Um, there was a... <laughs> There was a kind of funny part where there was an ice cream truck that was filled with ether that they were going to use to make and cut the heroin, which apparently you can do. I don't do drugs. There was The fight in the bathroom was kind of hilarious. <clears throat> um, I thought that the guy that was actually, you know, going to be driving the goddamn thing, he looked like the actor from Silent Rage, John Kirby. If you know, you know. He really did look like him. Unfortunately, that guy passed away a, a few years ago, but he would have been alive during this. So, <clears throat> then we tried some funny stuff after they escape and blow some people up. And after, after T. Leone tried to shoot somebody in the goddamn <clears throat> club, shooting Cairo syrup, basically, they go to this convenience store thing and this guy assumes that they are just criminals because they're black. Oh, that's it. And he's saying some broken English stuff, and it's supposed to be funny. He did say, instead of, I'll blow you away, I'll blow you away, I blow you and I blow you. <clears throat> and then they said, you know, they pulled their guns on him, just giving some tropical fruit bubblicious and some Skittles, I believe that's what it was. Why was T.L. Leone trying to be sexy? Why? Who, who wrote this? Who wrote this into the movie? I just want to talk and scold you, you idiot. If you like T.L. Leone, by the way, that's fine. You will not like this review. And if you made it this far, you don't, and, and you're willing to put up with a lot of stuff. A lot of the jokes get played out, like the fact Teresa shows up, and then Teresa's upset at Marcus. Oh no. And then, you know, there's this guy Jojo, the dog face boy, seemingly, who gives them an address for this chemical lab that's being done, that's, you know, here to cut all this stuff, all this shit blowing up, slow mo stuff. It kind of just gets messy there at the end, pretty much like my cohesive narrative throughout any kind of goddamn review. But I'm doing it for entertainment purposes. They expected people to pay money for this. And people did pay money for this, as I talked about earlier. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, Francine was the one that was in on it because they took some naughty pictures of her. Well, you shouldn't have done that. No, no, no. I would have liked to have seen them. She was attractive. She was like, I think, in her early 40s. I would have looked. I mean, with her permission. But anyway, <clears throat> that 90s computer tech, where 90s computers could track people eventually with, like, almost, you know, silly little <clears throat> radar-like shit. This is not Doom. Doom, this was not. It reminded me of the maps of Doom, actually, if you know what I'm talking about. When you pick up the computer screen and you can suddenly, or the modder, and you can suddenly figure out this entire thing. And then you get blown up by a goddamn cyber demon because you didn't see the 200-foot demon with the rocket launcher right in front of you. God damn it. So, yeah, the money deal goes tits up. Everything blows up. Literally everything. I think they've just wasted probably about half the budget right there of the $19 million. Just said $9.5 million to the end of this. Everything blows up. Literally everything blows up. <clears throat> Um, Marcus gets shot, and they're gonna kill Cairo Syrup, or Mike is, and he says, oh, no, 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 I'm not gonna do that, but then he tries to pull out a four-shooter, and tries to give him four eyes, but then he gets shot, and that's it, and then 
Tia Leone and um, Will Smith end up handcuffed together because it is cuffing season. I believe that's how the phrase goes. I'm pretty certain I got it wrong. Yeah, you know, they implied that Tia Leone was going to be part of this sequel. Good thing she wasn't. Not that the sequel was any better, but I will get to that. What did you guys think of Bad Boys? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.